What's going on guys? Yogizilla here. How you doing? How you doing? We're talking a lot more about Hearthstone in this vlog. Cause it's, it's what's on my mind. Like really. If you haven't figured that out yet. Kind of obsessed about it. And I have to kind of discipline myself not to play it that much. Like I'm not playing it right now obviously. Um, I don't know if the video. Whoa let's see the videos. Mucking up. Should not be happening. Well. Hopefully I don't get a freeze frame where I'm like, you know, you don't want any of that. But, uh, my camera's been messing up for some reason lately. The sounds catchy. Little fantasy, electronic. Mm. Okay. Let me stop messing with stuff. Okay. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, Hearthstone deck building. We're also going to talk about the Rogue. Because I have issues with the rogue. Everybody has like a class or two that like they hate. And uh, for me, it's kind of rogue. And I'll get to why. Um, and after that, we're going to talk about some of the stuff that's been going on over at GeekyAntics.net. So let's start off with... Uh, let's start off with, with deck building first before I go into the rant about the rogue. Um... A lot, a lot of times when I help people out with, I must say League of Legends, Hearthstone, uh, League of Legends has been on my mind too, um, when I help people out with Hearthstone, actually it, it, it does have commonalities with uh, League of Legends because I don't feel like Hearthstone is a game you want to jump into alone. It's easier to get into, it's easier to pick up, much easier than most other games, especially strategy games. But a lot of times people go into Hearthstone on their own, just like League of Legends, they d develop the wrong habits. And then they get frustrated and then they quit preemptively. Or they make preemptive uh, judgments about the game. Like, oh, this is a pay to win game. Or the only uh, way you could win is if you have legendary cards. Or there's a lot of broken things in there and the meta's really stale because you can only really run one of like three decks to win and I, those are all fair criticisms but it's an opportunity with the genre as a whole the thing is I think Blizzard has done a really good job in kind of dealing with some of those issues and I'm not trying to be a fanboy I'm being realistic I mean I play Soul Forge, Scrolls, Magic Yu-Gi-Oh, Naruto, physical and digital card games, Rage of Bahamut if you want to count that, uh, Bad Blood, Shadow Era, that's a great game too, and they all have major issues, I mean glaring issues, and they're still doing well for themselves in their own, in their own rights. Um, I guess to appreciate the game and really give it a, a, a chance, you have to think about where it's come from. This used to be like you know, a small, a really small team um, project. Now it is 16 people working on it, and they, and Blizzard's dedicating more to it because it's it's becoming bigger than they expected. I um, mean, it all started with basically two guys that were really passionate about it, Eric Dodds and Hamilton Chu, who always felt the deck building games were great, but they weren't, uh, they didn't have mass appeal because it was very niche. It was None of it was. A, it wasn't a very inclusive experience. Very exclusive. It's because it scared people away, and it was kind of like for elitists, you know, and real pro kind of players, real really competitive players. Whereas with Hearthstone, you could play it casually, but I think everyone in the end, whether you love or hate PvP, you want to win, and you have a little bit of of competitive urges within you, and that's it's kind of, that's kind of human nature. So it, to me, it comes with deck building. It comes out to deck building. I, 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 and I think to really enjoy the game, you have to realize that pretty much all the classes right now, with the basic cards, you have things you can work with, tools you can work with to, to be on the level with even the most expensive decks. It's going to be tougher, but you, it is doable. And you can unlock those, ba those 20 basic cards for, for each class by just playing the game. And it's not that much of a grind, really. Um, and this is from someone that, that kind of slacked off during the beta, and now I'm making up for lost time. Um, 
it was it was partly by choice and it was also partly because of the timing. And I knew for me back then, I didn't want to get used to the game the way it was during beta and then come into it when it went live and be disappointed with all the changes because um, things were going to be nerfed inevitably. Um, and I was just super busy. I mean, this is the game I've been waiting for a long time and I was invited to the beta pretty early on. But that's neither here nor there. The point is that I had reasonable expectations of what to really, you know, want in a game and what I should really believe will happen. You know, I understand a lot of design decisions in the game. But anyway, let's talk about deck building. Because I'm going off on a rant. Um, but I, f I feel like, really, before you can get into deck building, you have to have the right attitude about the game. And understand that a lot of it is skill-based. Most of it is skill-based. There are is a there will always be some random element and some degree of pay to win but that's more slight edge it still comes down to skill so deck building is a big part of it um, along with your mulligan your starting hand deck building is probably the single most important thing in the game other than knowing how to play your cards and understanding your deck but deck building what it does is it gets you into the mindset of what do I want to do with this uh, class what do I want this deck to do? And does this deck work well with the natural abilities of my chosen class, my chosen hero or villain? And, you know, does it synergize well? Those are kind of things you got to kind of ask yourself. I think there's really three ways you can build a deck. You can have a theme deck where you just see certain things that work well together. You know, I mean, you might be working from scraps. I make lots of scrap decks, and sometimes they, I try to build around a theme, but I don't have enough to do that theme. So I have to kind of split up the strategy, the the, the, the winning conditions for each deck. Um, the second thing is, and, and themes are like, you know, I want to have all pirates, I want to have all murlocs. But the themes, you know, by themselves are not that good. You need to have kind of like a core strategy. And so that's the second way to build it. Build around a single... Or maybe two or th three winning conditions mo at most. Um, it's always going to be, I'm going to kill the other person and you bring all the life down. But will it be through early aggressive rush play? Will it be through more control of the board? Um, will it be more through spells or more through minions? You know, the kind of things I think about. The third way I, I think that's, that you should look at when building a deck... Um, and actually, let me, let me, let me, let me back a step. So you can build around a theme or a core strategy. All right, let's say that's one. Two is you could build a, a counter deck. Maybe you keep running into annoying things like, um, hunter aggro decks with the uh, Unleash the Hounds, Hyenas, and lots of charge and all that crazy stuff, right? Or maybe run into priests and they're be really annoying because they pull a lot of big creatures out and they keep healing. Um, druids, they can get big creatures out early because of all their free mana. You know, whatever it is, it's annoying you. Maybe you're tired of murlocs, so you just get a lot of mass removal um, and, and, and things that let you ping small creatures and remove them. So the second way is to build a counter. And that's good, except you can't account for every... Um, kind of thing out there. You might want to account for the most common thing, and that's a that's a viable way of doing it. All right. So the first way you build, we said, is around building around a theme or core strategy, right? The second way is building counter decks based on upon what you lose the most to, and that's a sound strategy too. But the best way, the third way that I think that's ideal for deck building is to take the cards that work. Well, with the core strategy, but more importantly, work well with what that class is known for. And this is where we're going to come into the rogue. The rogue is known for uh, the, the combo mechanic, where if you play cards after each other in the right sequence, they get bu they get buffed uh, abilities, uh, better effects, um, and the combos are a big part of rogue. You kind of want to use the combos wherever possible because you ma you basically become more efficient with each turn. You put out more damage. You put out uh, more creatures. You clear more things. You know, it's just a lot better momentum. 
And that's really synergy right there because things are working in tandem and everything kind of triggers off other things, sets up other things. Um, you know, Rogue is also known for having, I would say, some of the best removal in the game. Um, control Rogue um, is very big. Uh, Miracle Rogue has a lot of control in it too. Um, I don't run the ladder. And I, I try to avoid net decking, but I'm aware of what happens with that. And it's good to be aware of what are what what's being played on top tier um, co competitive matches, just so you know what to expect and you understand where the meta is currently at. But personally, I don't net deck. But net decking is fine if you don't really have any idea where to start off. You haven't found your own personal style. That may be the fourth way to approach it. Look online, hearth pwn, hearth stats. Uh, there are so many Hearthstone sites out there. See what people are running, what are they, ha they are having the highest success rate with, and then get familiar with that, and then once you get a feel for what makes that deck work, maybe tweak it and make it your own. And that's perfectly fine, you know. After a while, everybody's going to be running similar decks anyway. You can't be completely unique. But, I, you know, I feel there's still enough room with the current card set. Before they even release Crystal Next Ramus, I think it's still room for them. To, there's still room for everyone to be able to try new things and really surprise folks, um, especially if you avoid the main kind of decks that are out there right now. Um, so those are the ways you build a deck. And right now, if you look at it, um, Mage, um, I'm just gonna say Mage is part of the worst in constructive play. That's, I think, something everyone could agree on. Rogue? This is why I don't like Rogue. I think Rogue sucks unless you have an expensive uh, library of cards. Either you pumped a lot of time into the game and got really good draws, or you pumped a lot of money into it and got really good cards. Uh, to have a really effective Rogue deck, you need to have really good things in there, and it's going to be really expensive. Really, I keep seeing really. I know. Um, so with that in mind, I, I think everyone should choose a class based upon what you like, right? Um, you know what you find enjoyable as a core mechanic, and then you come back and maybe think about out of the heroes you like, the core mechanics you like, what's most viable right now. Because no one really likes losing. You kind of have to develop a thick skin, and when you're first starting off, you got to kind of brace yourself to lose a lot. Um, and if, you know, a lot of people find Mage fun, and that's what they start you off with, but she's not that good in the current meta. Um, and again, to make a mage work, you need to have really expensive cards. Um, the deck overall will be expensive. So, I don't think it's worth it when there's better options. Uh, personally, I like Hunter, Priest, uh, Warlock. My Druid and Shaman have been coming up. You know, I'm probably worse with Warrior, Rogue, Mage, and Paladin. Well, even my Paladin... Has some neat thing. Actually, my paladin has some pretty cool mechanics. Once I get certain cards for that, that's going to be one of my better decks for sure. But you know, it, it, it kind of just depends on, on your personal style. Some people want to just get that early aggressive deck, whether you know, and with that, those aggro decks, those rush decks, you have a great early game and you can win a you can usually win the game fast. But then if you miss your, op your window opportunity, you're gonna lose or because you'll be card starved or whatever. Or you just have really weak minions or no real removal, no real board control, and your opponent, you know, has really scary things out, you know, and better removal than you, better board control. Um, so, you know, with aggro decks, you de you're typically going to win really hard or lose really hard. Um, so you may want something that's more control-based, where you have the hard removal, the ma manipulation of the board, and maybe you could debuff or buff up creatures. You know, there's a lot of things you could do. Uh, take control of creatures, you know, mind control with the priest. I think, I, I personally feel like, in spite of the criticism from top players, I think priest has a lot of things in his toolkit, and priest decks 
have a lot of different win conditions, a lot of ways to different ways to win, um, a lot of different ways to create threats on a on each turn, and also to get card draw. Uh, Northshire cleric, um, the auctioneer. Um, if you want, you could do cult match that kind of goes against the spirit of uh, a priest. But you know, there's so many different ways you can make things happen with a priest deck that I feel it's probably the best class right now once you have the right cards because you could do mind control you could make creatures really huge you could swarm um, you could do direct damage you, and then you can heal yourself or your creatures a lot of flexibility but that's just my personal preference but um, when you go into the deck building process you know start off with the core that you know and really start thinking does this need to be a two of or should this be a one of or maybe I shouldn't have this in here at all you know, look at each at each card and, and think about the pace of your deck. Do you want to be really aggressive and have a lot of low-cost things and then have no late-game answers? You know, what do you want to commit to? Maybe you want to be more balanced. Maybe you want to be more late-game than early-game. Uh, it really depends. Um, but think about that a lot of people have aggro decks, so you may want to have those early answers. Um, do you think about the pace? Think about the balance of your, your your mana curve, you know, the overall cost of your deck per turn, and whether you have early plays or you don't, maybe you might have more late plays, uh, and stuff like that. Another big thing I would say is when you think about a two of or one of in a, you know, in a card, think about what would happen if you get two of those cards in your hand will you be, will you say awesome or will you say this is great but i don't have this card that i need with it when you make cards when you make deck decisions that require too many dependencies it's scary unless you have some kind of way of doing card draw you know you want to have cards in your deck as much as possible you want them to be cards that can work well with each other and don't require you to get one one card out of 30 that works well with that particular card or card set. So that's that's one way you determine whether you should include a card at all or if you should put one or two in there. Um, and that's and that's huge because let's say mind control. It's a great card. You know, it's great when you can take control of someone's minion, especially if it's a legendary and you don't have that legendary. But if you think about it realistically, having two t 10 cost cards in your deck, if you draw those two you know, mid, mid or late game, and you really need to get some minions out, you're, you're in trouble. Also, it's 10 cost right now in the, in the way, in the current iteration of the game. So at 10 cost, that means you, you, you use that card, and that's it. Your, your turn is pretty much done other than moves with your existing creatures, if you have any. So if you have no minions, all you're doing is stealing a minion and hoping that your opponent doesn't have removal. So it's very situational. You could do two of those, but usually you only want one in a priest deck. And I would say get at least one because if someone gets a, a tough legendary and you have no more removal left, you want to at least take it over and force them to do removal. And then you might end up controlling the temple that way. Because uh, now they have to respond to that threat. Like a uh, Ragnaros. You don't want to have a ra someone take over your Ragnaros and have them throwing fireballs all over the place. He can't attack directly, but those fireballs hurt. So, you know, stuff like that you want to think about. The deck building process really isn't that intimidating. And I, I, I actually have the most fun with it. I do more deck building than I do gameplay sometimes. Because I just love thinking about different scenarios. And then, you know, playing those scenarios out in my head. And then actually testing it out and see if my assumptions are correct. And sometimes I just slap things together and I say, Alright, let me see if this will work. You know, just for fun. And then I say, that doesn't work because it requires too many things to line up. And again, we're talking about dependencies. Huge thing. But anyway, I'm ranting on about this, and it's probably already 20 minutes in. Yeah, it is. Whoo! I was running the money. But, you know, if, if you're curious about Hearthstone, we do have a series uh, more geared towards the average player on Hearthstone. People that, you know, maybe may be competitive, but they're not really hardcore about it. More casual players. I think it's possible to be casual. And competitive you know casual and effective so we're kind of gonna gear towards that kind of demographic you know demographic that's a little stuffy business word for you 
But, um, hell, I'm one of those people. I, I, I play the game like crazy. It's my most played game right now. But I'm not super competitive. I just, I'm just not that kind of person. But who knows? Maybe one day I might get motivated to get back into that. But anyway, uh, we're going to be doing a new series on geekyantics.net and on uh, Geeky Antics on YouTube and uh, probably Twitch too. Yeah, Twitch. But we're Geeky Antics everywhere. And it's going to be the Hearthstone Noob Nook. And basically the whole premise is approach the game for very, from a very casual, accessible point of view. Because the game is meant to be accessible. It's meant to be a game that anyone can get into. It's simple, easy to pick up, but then there's depth to it. Tons of depth. So that's what's beautiful about the game. And we want to embrace that. Uh, and I, I want to I recommend, it's, this is not one of my podcasts, this is not one of our, our podcasts at Geeky Antics, but... Um, a good show to check out is a worthy opponent. Now, I love the Angry Chicken, but the problem with them is that they tend to approach the game in a way that comes off a little bit snobbish and elitist at times. The wor a worthy opponent is a lot more fun and friendly and down to earth, so it might be worth checking out. Now, the Ang Angry Chicken is a great show, great production value, but uh, it's mainly Dills talking, and he's a real he's a pretty high level player. And uh, they don't let Jocelyn talk enough. And I think Jocelyn on the Angry Chicken is a better representation of what the average Hearthstone player is. You know, she's competitive, but it's not her only thing. It's not the only thing she's doing. And, uh, and she's just fun to listen to. So that's kind of the thing, the thing we're going to be doing. Same kind of approach we're going to be taking with uh, the Hearthstone Noob Nook. Just ma making the game as fun as possible and, and then making it easy to easier to compete without like you know making a huge life commitment but um speaking of uh geekyantics.net and kind of wrapping this up i'm getting a little fidgety here because i got like a bunch of things going through my mind and i, I know i have to keep it moving along but uh over geekyantics.net we are doing custom graphics and overlays and logos uh banners a lot of cool stuff coming up I've been busy on it, and I'm doing a lot of stuff on my own, just because uh, the few people that I, we have kind of commissioned to do this stuff have been flaky. So, you know, I just want to get it done, and, you know, I'm competent, and uh, most of it will be placeholder stuff, but it's looking really nice. Uh, so if you go over to twitch.tv forward slash geeky antics, you will see a pretty sexy uh, Twitch channel. I set up little tiles for all our different shows, and, um, you know, just a full schedule and events, kind of stuff that we do. Uh, and more, more to come. With that, we're also going to be doing giveaways. I know I've been teasing this for a long time, but I'm kind of, I'm trying to prime the pump and see if people are interested. We're going to do Curse Voice Beta Key giveaways for people that like League of, League of Legends. And that is one of the main games that we play over at Geeky Antics. And we also have tons of games to give away on steam i got some random stuff like blu-rays and cds so there's a lot of stuff we have in the grab bag stay tuned for that the best way to keep up with it is just keep visiting geekyantics.net and if you go to the community feedback and events section you'll see all our polls giveaways and ways that you can get involved with what we're doing at the gang you know geekyantics.net um and yeah, that's pretty much it. Just finishing under 25 minutes. This has been an extensive vlog. I'm I'm super excited about Hearthstone because it's a way for us to connect with you. And to me, it's a big thing. It's the one game everyone can play regardless of what platform they're on or what kind of computer they have. And that's exciting. This is the least common denominator. It's going to help us geeks unite. And what's not to get excited about that? So super stoked about that. Make sure you visit us at geekyantics.net. You leave his voicemail at 206-415-4987. And don't be shy. Leave comments. I know people don't like leaving comments, but if you don't like leaving comments, then share it with friends. Um, Reblog re it. You know, Pinterest it. Whatever you want to do. But help us spread the word out and get involved. We want to hear what you, what you guys think about everything, including what I'm talking about here with Hearthstone. What are your tips for, for newer players or complete newbies? Um, tons of stuff to discuss. So come on over. Come hang out with us. And this has been my vlog, this is Yogi Zilla, and I'm out.